Okay, hi guys, welcome to this next video uh, or next set of uh, videos where we'll be looking at genetic engineering. So genetic engineering is obviously part of the BMAT section 2 biology. Not too much of a difficult topic, guys. Uh, really, you just have to understand the basic principles and the question should be pretty straightforward. But anyways, guys, let's go through um, um, the questions just to build up your confidence. Okay, so um, let's start at the top, guys, with BMAT 2019, question one. So it says the diagram shows some stages involved in genetic engineering. And here's a diagram of that. And it says which role correctly identifies W, X, Y, and Z. So if you're not feeling confident, guys, don't worry, just skip straight to the answers. But if you are feeling confident, then um, uh, give it a go, guys. Give yourself a minute. Remember, timing is key for the BMAT. And make sure to come back after a minute so you can check your solutions with mine. Okay, guys, so let's look at this. So it's looking like we're starting at this process over here. So essentially, this gray shaded bit, right? So uh, so uh, we hope that you know that this structure over here, right, is going to be a chromosome. So this is just a chromosome. And obviously, we know that because it's um, you have two sister chromatids and it's hold, held in the center via centromere. And a part of a chromosome, by definition, is basically just the gene, isn't it? So that must mean this W thing over here right? This has to be a gene. So already, guys, we've already excluded half the options. So we've already increased our chances um, by two. Okay, now this thing, which is essentially th these zappers you're using to essentially extract this gene from the chromosome, these are called restriction enzymes. Um, the actual name for these, I think, is called restriction endonuclease. But remember, this is just GCSE, guys, so restriction enzymes would do. Um, so that means X is going to be restriction enzymes. So we're either left with e or um, e or G, and essentially what restriction enzymes are. So as with any enzymes, they they have a specific active site, active site which recognizes specific substrates, and essentially these restriction enzymes essentially look for um, the boundary between two bases. For example, a restriction enzyme might cut between like a C and a G or an A and a T. Uh, something like that so it cuts at really specific uh, sequences so that so then we've uh, extracted our uh, gene from there then what we have guys is um, this circle bit right so this circle bit um, is essentially a plasmid so remember plasmid is just uh, extra chromosomal DNA which you find in the bacteria and can you see guys we're using the same X right this is important we're using the same X um, to break open this plasmid to give us this structure over here so a plasmid which has an open end right? And then essentially we introduce the gene into the plasmid. So we're looking at this step over here, right? And then they essentially merge together uh, like that. And then essentially to make them fully seal up, we use this Z, right? Which is a DNA ligase, right? So if you like a DNA ligase is essentially just a DNA polymerase. So it basically makes the sugar phosphate backbone. So what, what did you say? We said, why is a plasmid? So we know it's going to, essentially we already know the answer um, is E and lastly we know that Z is a ligase so just to make sure we know it's that one so the answer is E now if I was being if I wanted to save extra time so just from X uh, by the time we done W it said it can either be between E and H we done X we said it can either be E or G um, just to save time since I can see for uh, E and G uh, Z has to be ligase I would have just checked Y and make made sure that you know Y is a plasmid therefore it must be E without even considering what Z is, because that has to be the answer then, All right? So that's basically it, guys. But I just want to go over a, a bit more detail, because once, if you understand the concept properly, guys, you're basically sorted for this topic. So an example where you might do something like this is, for example, the production of insulin. So obviously insulin is, is used for diabetic patients, isn't it? And um, before, back in the days, I think they used to get the insulin from pigs. But, you know, that can cre create all sorts of problems. For example, pig insulin is not exactly the same as human insulin. So you use genetic engineering essentially to manufacture um, human insulin, which is better than essentially pig uh, pig insulin, right? But one thing uh, in this diagram uh, that I don't really like is that, so these zappers, the cuts they're making over here, so as you can see like here and here, now these are called uh, blunt ends. So these are called blunt ends, right? So uh, blunt ends is not really what you want in this process. What you want instead is uh, uh, something we call a sticky end. An example of a sticky end would be something like this. So something along the lines of this is a sticky end. So can you see, rather than it being cut, we have um, a region. So over here, we have a region of the DNA. We only have single strand, and then you have double strand here. Then you have 
here, then you have single strand, then you have double strand. And the beauty of this is that when you use the same restriction enzyme to cut out the gene from the chromosome, is that the gene would like literally like a puzzle fit in over there. So that fits in nicely over there, right? So then you have the boundary between a sing, um, single strand, single strand. Now this part over here, that will just hydrogen bond nicely uh, because you use the same restriction enzyme. Right, and then this part would hydrobond bond nicely because you use the same restriction enzyme. But you might have noticed, guys, um, there's, there's there's a gap here. So over here, it hasn't sealed completely. So you still have essentially you have single strand gap, single strand, right? So you want to really make make a full on seal over here, and you want to make a full on seal over here. So to fully seal that, complete the sugar phosphate backbone, you use a DNA ligase. So that's the purpose of the DNA ligase, right? And yeah, that's literally how the process is done. So you get the chromosome, restriction enzyme, extract the gene. Ideally, you want to create uh, sticky ends. Do the same thing to the plasmid, cut it, create sticky ends. Join the two hydro bonds, complementary base pairs. Then DNA ligase to really complete the sugar phosphate backbone. And that's literally it, guys. And then also just to complete this story, what happens after this is you get essentially a, a bacteria, any bacteria, and you slot this plasmid into the bacteria that's called a transformation so you transform that bacteria with this uh, new plasmid which has the gene for insulin and obviously what's going to happen then is that this bacteria is just going to divide isn't it by binary fission several several times and then so let's just say we have like a million of these guys now after several rounds of uh, binary fission and then you have a million of these and all each one of those is going to have this um is going to have this super plasmid and then what are they going to do to that uh, plasma acid DNA? So they're going to transcribe that and translate that. And essentially, you're going to get a ton of insulin. But obviously, that thing might be contaminated with other proteins that the bacteria is producing. So you essentially um, purify that. You get purified insulin. And that's essentially what you give um, to the diabetic patients to um, improve their symptoms, essentially. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. And I hope to see you in the next question where we'll look at this in a bit more detail. Hello guys, welcome again. So uh, in the previous video, we we're looking at BMAT 2019 question one, where we looked at the first question uh, for genetic engineering. It was a really good uh, question, I think, to introduce the topic. Hopefully that made a lot of sense, guys. We went through the question and then we went through a bit more detail on how this process works. But with that knowledge, guys, we should be pretty good, I think, for the rest of the questions. So let's put that to the test anyway. So BMAT 2016, uh, question five. So what question five is saying, guys, is um, we have, the diagram shows some of the stages of how a length of DNA can be removed from one organism and introduced into another organism. And then we have a set of images and it says which role um, is correct. So let's um, give you guys a minute, guys. And uh, hopefully all of you now, we've aided with the previous question, can give this question a shot. And let's come back together and go through the solution. So hello again, guys. Let's go through this. So this blob over here, right? is part of something which has two bits joined in the center by one thing, right? So these two bits, remember, are sister chromatids, and this thing in the middle over here is going to be a centromere. So remember, when all, whenever you have all three of those pieces, you essentially have yourself a chromosome. And a part of a chromosome, by definition, is just a gene. So that, uh, that black blob is just uh, a gene, and meaning a W must be the whole thing, which is a, a chromosome. Right, and then you cut out that gene using X. And remember, the thing used to cut out genes from chromosomes is a restriction enzymes. So this is going to be a restriction enzyme. And essentially, remember, as with any enzymes, guys, restriction enzymes are really specific in what they cut. So essentially, they look for um, specific sequences. Um, they look for specific sequences in the DNA, and that's essentially where they cut. And I didn't really cover this in the previous video, guys, because I didn't want to elaborate too much and, and make things uh, too complicated. But if you guys do want to know, the sequences at which they cut are called palindromic sequences. So an example of a palindromic sequence is, for example, uh, let's just say G, G, A, T, C, C. So the complementary to this will be C, C, T, A, G, G. Now, this is essentially palindromic, right? Because if you read it on the top strand, it's G, G, A, T, C, C. And if you read it on the bottom strand, but in reverse, it's G, G, A, T, C, C, which is basically the same thing. So that's an example of a palindromic sequence. So these restriction enzymes love these sequences, and this is essentially where they cut. And remember, guys, they can do two kinds of cut. They can either just like bang through like that, right? 
and this is going to give you a blunt end or what they can do and what you, ideally you want um, the restrict enzyme to do is cut something like this so a staggered cut like that and when you do this staggered kind of cut you're going to get sticky ends Right, and remember in the previous videos, you need sticky ends to merge the two things, um, two bits of uh, DNA together through hydrogen bonds, and then you make the final seal using DNA ligase. Right, so um, yeah, let, let's continue on the story. Then, guys, we have um, we have a plasmid, right? And a plasmid is uh, cut by why we know it's a plasmid because it's a circular uh, bit of DNA, and then you've extracted your gene over here so after you've done this step you're going to have something like this let's fill this in nice and neatly and then you're going to have your open bit of um open bit of plasmid somewhat like that right and then you're going to join these two things together and essentially have yourself a essentially a transformed plasmid a plasmid which has this uh, special gene remember the common example that everyone uses guys is insulin because this is how essentially insulin for diabetics is actually made so what I've done here, guys, the way I've shown it is with uh, blunt ends, but I remember ideally, refer back to the previous um, question, ideally you want sticky ends because then they merge nicely together. So if we go through these options, guys, so W we said is a chromosome, right? So we know that is already going to be between A to C. Um, X is a, so where is X? So X is, it, so you, X is the thing you use to cut out the gene from the chromosome. That's going to be a restriction enzyme. Uh, so now we're left with these two, right? And this always happens, guys. So look, um, can you see that? So now we know the answer is either A or B. So it's one of these guys, right? But the next option, uh, Y is a, is, is, is the answer is restriction enzyme for both of them. So we're not even going to worry about that. We're going to go on to Z. So Z is either restriction enzyme or ligase. But then it says the gene is inserted to the chromosome through. And we know that's a ligase, isn't it? Because um, initially you have the hydrogen bonds between the stickings and then the ligase makes the final sugar phosphate backbone seal. So then... That means we know for a fact then the answer is B, okay? So hopefully, guys, I've added a bit more detail. You don't really have to know all these details, guys, but hopefully um, that all made sense, and I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next question where we can um, test our knowledge a bit more. Okay, guys, the previous question we looked at is BMAT 2016, question five. So very similar to uh, the first one we looked at, BMAT 2019, question one. Wasn't really much of a difference, and hopefully that was good revision, guys, and the concepts really make sense now. So let's go on to the next question, guys, BMAT 2014, question nine, and let's hope this one can be even better. So this one reads, insulin is a protein involved in the regulation of human blood glucose levels. So the classic example, guys, insulin. And um, how insulin works, guys, that's more of a thing to do, a late topic called homeostasis. We'll go through that in due time. It says, genetic engineering can be used uh, to allow the large-scale production of human insulin. We've seen that process. It says, which statement describes the process of genetic engineering in this case? So I think you guys should be confident at this point, guys. So give this question a shot. Uh, be sure to come back in a minute and we can go through the solution. So let's go through this, guys, step by step. Let's look at each of the answers. Look at why um, certain ones are wrong and why the correct one is in, uh, indeed the correct one. So it says, taking insulin from a human uh, and inserting it into the DNA uh, of a bacterium. Okay, so this one already sounds wrong because it's saying, you, you, it says you're taking insulin, uh, you're taking a protein from a human and you're inserting the protein into DNA. That doesn't make sense. You can't insert a protein into DNA. You can insert a DNA into DNA, but you can't insert protein into DNA. So this one has to be wrong, guys. Okay, the next one, taking insulin from a human and inserting it into the DNA of a bacterium. So that's basically the same thing, isn't it, guys? For the same reason, B must also be incorrect. The next one, taking the insulin gene. So this one sounds better. Taking the insulin gene from a human chromosome and inserting it into the DNA of a bacterium. So you're inserting uh, human DNA into bacterial DNA. That's perfectly fine. And it says, as the bacteria produce, it makes large quantities of insulin DNA that can be used to treat hu uh, human diabetes. So that ha has to be wrong because what you want from the bacteria is not the insulin DNA. You want the actual insulin from the bacteria, which you then purify and you can give it to diabetic patients. So this one has to be wrong, guys, again. Uh, D, taking the insulin gene from a human chromosome and say into the DNA of a bacterium, that's perfectly fine. As the bacteria produces, it makes large quantities of insulin. So that, that sounds better, insulin protein that can be used to treat human diabetes. This one's good. I think that's the answer, but let's just uh, exclude E. It says taking the insulin gene from a human chromosome and re replacing it into another human chromosome in the same human so that it would work better to produce large quantities of insulin. So... Uh, Firstly, this has to be wrong because there's no mention of a bacteria. Remember, this whole process of genetic engineering, guys, is the 
is essentially happening between a human and a bacteria. This is just within humans. This sounds more like gene therapy, guys, uh, which is a thing which is upcoming, but certainly not genetic engineering as you would make insulin, as we just talked about in the previous questions. So um, this one has to be wrong. So, yeah, so as you can see, guys, with these kind of questions, it's really easy to make a mistake because all of the options look really similar. So, for example, with between B and C, the only difference really was that it says taking insulin and, and the second and the third option, C, says taking insulin gene. So you have to have a really eagle eye, guys, to watch out for um, these subtleties and make sure you're not making silly mistakes. But hopefully, uh, as we practice, guys, you should be perfectly fine and good for the exam. So hopefully that was uh, that would make sense, guys. And yeah, I look forward to see you in the next question. Okay, guys. So in the previous question, guys, BMAT 2014, question nine, we looked at a bit um, more of a wordy question of uh, how you can explain genetic engineering with the classic example of insulin. Hopefully, guys, that wasn't too much of a problem. Um, really just showing guys that with the same concept they can either show it with pictures or with uh, words you need to be comfortable with both but i think you guys are good good to move on so let's go to the next question guys um bmat 2013 question 13 so it says which of the following is not needed in order to genetic engineer bacterial cells produce a fluorescent protein from jellyfish so give this question a shot guys and uh, yeah be sure to come back after a minute where we'll go through the answer Okay, so um, yeah, so this is actually a common common thing. Actually, there there is actually a, a gene from jellyfish which codes for a protein which it, which essentially glows up, and this is used a lot in research. Um, it's quite cool, but anyways, you don't really have to know anything about that to answer this question. It's literally just genetic engineering, but this might scare a few people. Don't be scared, guys. You normally see genetic engineering with insulin, but this is just genetic engineering with another uh, gene. So there's nothing to be scared about. It's the same process. So. Yeah, let's go through the options. So it says which one's not needed, and the not is in a uh, uh, is bolded. So you you clearly need a, a ligase, isn't it? You need a ligase to join the sugar phosphate backbone to complete the seal. Um, you need a plasmid, obviously. You need uh, um, to carry DNA, and the thing which carries DNA is called a vector. So plasmid vector, you definitely need that. Um, uh, the fluorescent protein uh, from a jellyfish. Uh, do you think you need that? No, you don't, guys. You, you don't need the fluorescent protein from the jellyfish. The thing you need from the jellyfish is the fluorescent gene, right, from the jellyfish, right? Uh, and then once you have the gene, uh, you put that into the plasmid, and then from there you can make the protein. But initially, to engineer the thing, you don't, you, you not at all, guys, you need the, uh, the protein. So this one's going to be incorrect. So you're not going to need this one. And therefore, that's the answer, because the answer, the question is asking which one don't you need, isn't it? So that one's going to be the answer there. And then uh, let's just finish off anyway, guys. It says enzymes to cut DNA molecules. So um, that you, you are going to need enzymes, isn't it, cut DNA? Remember, guys, you need the restriction um, enzymes, which the BMAT tends to refer to, or specifically the restriction endonuclease, to make those nice sticky ends for us to join the plasmid and the gene. So you are going to need this guy, and hence that's not going to be the correct answer. So hopefully, guys, this is uh, this was uh, not too difficult. And yeah, we move on, guys. Uh, hope to see you in the next question. Okay, guys, in the previous question, we looked at BMAT 2013, uh, question 13. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult, guys. Really just showing you that um, this process doesn't only happen with insulin. It happens with other um, genes as well. Um, but hopefully, um, in terms of technicalities, it wasn't too difficult, guys. But anyways, we move on to the next question. So BMAT 2013 again, guys, but this time question 17. It says, since Dolly the sheep, many other mammals have been cloned by somatic cell nuclear transfer. So basically what this process is, guys, is that essentially you take any, um, so, you, so let's just say a sheep. So you take a male sheep, you just take any, literally any cell from that, um, that sheep. Let's just say we take a skin cell, right? So we take a skin cell. So this is our skin cell with the nucleus. And then from the female sheep, guys, we take an egg cell, right? So we have an egg cell. Right, remember the uh, nuclear DNA is going to be diploid here, whereas in the egg cell, right, it's going to be haploid, so you have only one copy of each chromosome. Then essentially what you do to the egg cell is you get rid of, you minus the dot essentially, which is the N, which is the haploid DNA. So you have an e nucleated egg cell. And then from the skin cell, you extract out the nucleus, but this time you keep the nucleus rather than ex uh, discard it. But here you take out essentially the rest, so you're just left with the um, diploid nuclear DNA. And then you fuse these two things together, right? So you, you, you get e nucleated egg with the um, DNA from the skin cell. And essentially what that does, guys, is the environment of the egg cell essentially reprograms that DNA to essentially become a, a stem cell. So that's now a stem cell. 
And then essentially just continue on with the process of development. So stem cell becomes an embryo. And then that embryo essentially, so here you have a, that becomes an embryo. It develops, it develops, it develops. And then that goes into a surrogate, right? And then essentially the surrogate mother uh, would give birth uh, to the sheep, which has been produced through this method of somatic cell nuclear transfer. And then it just, I think it just explains the next anyway. So it says the genetic material from our body cells is sent to an egg cell that has its own nucleus removed, so enucleated egg cell. The success rate ranges from 0 0.1 to 3, so it's really low. Essentially, any of the steps that we've just mentioned guys can go wrong, which explains really why the success rate is so low for this, which is why so few cloned animals have been produced. Which of the following are reasons why this might happen? So this isn't really too much to do with the genetic engineering we've, we've just looked at, of you know, like how you make insulin, how you make uh, jellyfish proteins and stuff. But um, it's a bit different, but hopefully, guys, it's not too difficult. And hopefully you can apply your knowledge um, to give this question a shot. So give this question a shot, guys, and come back after a minute, and we'll be going through the answer. So let's go through this, guys. So it says, an egg uh, with a newly transferred nucleus may not... Uh, begin to divide or develop properly so basically this uh, this step over here that's possible isn't it guys because you've joined the two things together um but you know they might not they might might not like each other and therefore the the stem so that you form might not divide by mitosis to make a ball of cells which continues to develop uh, as it becomes an embryo so um this this could be one of the reasons why it fails actually so that's good um then it says the sperm cell may not fertilize the egg cell. That's clearly wrong because there's no sperm cells involved in this process, isn't there? So that has to be wrong. Then uh, three, uh, implantation of the embryo into the surrogate mother might fail. Yeah, so if you essentially break this point over here, the whole process is going to fail and you're not going to get your um, genetically uh, engineered uh, baby sheep, isn't it? So that's going to be wrong. Uh, and therefore, uh, that, 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 that's good. that can be possible. Though. Therefore, that can be uh, that one of the options. Implanted stem cells may not differentiate properly. Uh, that, that's wrong, isn't it, guys? Because you're not, what that's implying is that you have these stem cells and you're implanting those into surrogate, but you're not doing that. So, this is not what you're doing. You're, you have the stem cells, you allow them to develop it into an embryo, and then you're implanting the embryo. So, this has to be wrong, meaning five must be right. Because if you look at the answers, guys, all of those have three options, and we, we so far only have two options. And that means mean five must be correct. So, the answer is going to be one, three, and five which is going to be A, but let's just go through it anyway. The enucleated egg and the transferred nucleus may not be compatible. Yeah, we basically just mentioned that, isn't it? So the, the enucleated egg and the transferred nucleus might not like each other, and if they don't like each other, they're not going to um, divide and make an embryo, which which essentially at the end is going to give rise to the uh, uh, genetically engineered uh, sheep. So um, yeah, hopefully that has made sense, guys, and hopefully you could have used your logic uh, to figure this one out. But yeah, I think that concludes, guys, the uh, genetic engineering part of the BMAT questions. Again, as I hope you guys would agree, not too difficult. You've probably seen much more difficult things in the BMAT. Um, so hopefully you can get all the marks, guys, if this comes up in your exam. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video where we're looking at another topic. So see you then and take care of yourself.